This video is the fourth one of the seven part video series on the basic shapes in wet felting and this is what you're going to learn. The step by step process to make a ball with wool tops. How to correctly cut a wool top. How to get really thin wool layers for good results. How to know the final size of the ball after shrinkage. How much water and soap to use. What's the bounce test? So stay tuned. Supplies and equipment. In case you haven't seen the first videos, this is what you're going to need. Plastic to cover your work surface, bubble wrap, a wool top around 10 grams, soap, I'll be using laundry bar soap, you can use whatever soap works for you, water, and a towel. And here's our wool top. It's better to work with a small piece of the top so you'll need to cut it. You never cut wool with scissors. This would leave you with an even cut which would make it more difficult to work with. This is how you cut it instead. Hold the wool with both hands and keep them apart approximately 20 centimeters. Now pull gently but firmly. Now you separate a small tuft and make a knot. This will be the core of your ball around which you'll be adding more wool. Take another tuft and hold it with both hands. Slowly and gently pull them apart so that your wool tuft becomes thinner and fluffier. This is very important. If you do this with your wool, it will be layered very thinly, so this guarantees that you get a good quality felt and a nice looking surface. Be sure to have really dry hands at all times. Otherwise, the wool will stick to your hands like this and make working harder. Add it to your ball and be sure to alternate the directions like when you're winding a yarn ball. Keep the tuft flat to get good results. Prepare more wool and add it to the ball until you're satisfied with the size. Wool shrinks when felted, so how do you know you have the right size? You squeeze the ball between two fingers like this. This gives you the approximate final size of the felted ball after shrinkage. And in comes the soap. This is how I do it. I get my hands slightly wet and soapy. Don't use too much water here if you don't want to make your life difficult. Start gently rolling the ball between your hands. If it's still too dry, add more water and soap. The amount of water and soap should just be enough to avoid the wool from sticking onto your hands. Roll the ball on the bubble wrap to quicken the process and keep adding water and soap if you feel the ball is too dry. Just make sure you don't soak it. Alternate the movement between your hands and on the bubble wrap. If at any point you feel there's too much water, just squeeze it out. When the felting process is more advanced, you can start pressing harder. The ball won't fall apart anymore. Now and again, squeeze it to see if it is still too soft. You decide how much you want to felt it. I like to make my items really resistant, so I'll go on. Have you noticed that there's never water all over the place? You really don't need much water or soap to felt. On the contrary, 
Too much water or soap can slow down the felting process. I like to do the bounce test. Throw the ball on the table. If it bounces, it's ready. Remember how big the ball became when we squeezed it at the beginning? That's how big it is now. Et voila! It's ready. Now you just have to rinse. Here are some ideas for fun projects with felt balls. How are you planning to apply what you've learned? Please share in the comments below. In the next video, you'll see the difference of making a ball with wool bats. Until then, don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you soon.